Hello. In the second of my talks on radiation skin burns and interventional radiology, um, I'm going to discuss how the IRP air kerma, a topic that I covered in the first lecture, is actually related to the uh, peak skin dose that the patient receives. So first of all, this term, the peak skin dose, if you look at this region here where two beams overlap, then that is the part of the patient that gets the highest radiation dose. Air coma is something that's incident on the patient. Dose is the energy that's absorbed. There is a slight technical difference between the two that is of interest to, to physicists and only to physicists. And it's the peak skin dose uh, that I'm going to be talking about um, in this presentation. Now here's a nice example of a patient. Uh, you can see that we have uh, on the left side two areas that have been exposed, but where you have the overlap and the highest radiation, you have the highest biological consequences, uh, the greatest, the most detrimental skin reaction. And so it's the peak skin dose, the area is a secondary factor. We're always interested in which bit of the skin got the highest amount of absorbed dose radiation. We call that the peak skin dose. So the numbers that I'm going to be presenting were uh, identified by Don Miller and his colleagues. They were published a year ago. They looked at the IRP air kerma, they looked at the peak skin dose, and they looked at the relationship between them. And what they found was that they actually correlated reasonably well. They're not identical. On the horizontal axis, we have the number that the machine shows you, the air kerma, the radiation incident on the patient at this imaginary point, 15 centimeters uh, closer to the focal spot from the uh, imaging system isocenter. And vertically, we have a scientifically determined uh, peak skin dose that takes everything into account. And this is the actual energy absorbed per unit mass in the patient's uh, skin, uh, as shown here. Uh, if you look at some typical values, again taken from Don Miller's studies, they looked at embolizations of the head, neck and brain. These are lengthy, high-dose procedures. And what you find is that this true peak skin dose, they had various ways of calculating and measuring such values, that about 40% were between 1 and 2 gray, and we had a, a couple of percent or so that actually exceeded 5 gray, and scientifically speaking, I think the chance of a radiation burn appearing in these patients is actually quite high. When I look at the data that Don has kindly provided, I would say that a pop, at US academic medical centers, approximately 40% of patients will exceed a gray, a quarter will exceed two gray, 10% will exceed three gray, and 2% uh, will exceed five gray. And I would just mention in passing that at five gray, I would expect there to be some kind of, not major, but a definite radiation burn. Now, if you uh, do a scientific study, you can estimate or calculate or measure the true peak skin dose. You can also look at the number that your machine is giving you, this IRP air kerma rate, and therefore you can quantify a dose index. And a dose index is the peak skin dose divided by the IRP air kerma value both of which are measured in grey. When I teach residents now, I like to say, forget formulas, never mind the formula. Tell me what the formula means, so let me tell you what the dose index means. If the number is less than one, you are overestimating the true peak skin dose, you're being conservative. And if the dose index exceeds one, you're underestimating the true peak skin dose. So numbers less than one are good news, more than one are bad news. And again, if we look at a, 
uh, the head neuroembolization data, the 356 patients, the average peak skin dose turned out to be a couple of gray, and the average dose index was about 0.5. So that's good news. In these particular cases, we were underestimating the true peak skin dose. Here's all the data that they had in their study. And what you find is that on average, the numbers are like 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 as depicted here. That I would say is the good news that we have. Unfortunately, occasionally we get dose index values that are higher than one. And so I'm fairly confident in saying that the dose index for most of your patients is going to be less than one. But I would say in maybe 5 or 10 percent, uh, they will actually be greater than one. And the number that you're looking at on your monitor as you do the procedure will actually be underestimating the true peak skin dose. Um, again, if you have any questions on this relationship between IRP uh, Kerma and the corresponding peak skin dose, feel free to drop me an email, walterhuda at hotmail.com, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have.